I've had this 14 inch M1 Pro MacBook Pro since its day one launch, and it's been my main laptop ever since. But now after over a year, I think I've really figured out what I really like about this laptop, what I've disliked, and just about everything in between. Let's get started with a little review. I'm just gonna completely ignore all the specs. If you really do wanna know what this laptop is like spec-wise and the short-term ownership review of it, there are some cool reviews by some guy named Jimmy right here. All right, let's start. The M1 Pro MacBook Pro since the beginning has been able to handle practically everything I throw at it. I use it to edit a significant chunk of my videos. I use it to plan out my next videos. I use it to edit YouTube thumbnails and to do boring stuff we all need to do to survive, like pay bills, create documents and spreadsheets, write emails, and to do my taxes. All the different ports on the Pro have been absolutely fantastic for my own workflow. I'm rarely in a situation where I find myself scrambling for ports because the MacBook Pro always seems to have a port empty to use. For example, if I'm editing a YouTube video, I have a MagSafe charger plugged in, an SD card, and an external SSD, leaving me with two USB-C ports still open for use. All these ports do fill up though when I'm video editing with two external monitors, but that's when I'm in power user mode not laptop mode. While this MacBook has plenty of ports built in already, what about situations where you need even more than what it offers? That's where today's sponsor, Anchor, comes into play. The Anchor 563 10-in-1 USB-C docking station levels up your MacBook by letting you connect up to three monitors and pretty much anything else you need for your workstation. It has a display port with 2K 60 frame per second support, an ethernet port, a 4K 30 frames per second HDMI port, a 2K 60 frames per second HDMI port, two USB-A 2.0 ports, a USB-A 3.0, 2.2 port and a headphone jack. I personally find a product like the Anchor 563 docking station to be super useful where you want to keep all of your monitors and peripherals easily connected to your MacBook into one single consolidated unit. And then when you need to use them, you can quickly sit down at your desk, plug in a single USB-C cable between your MacBook and the hub, and then you have access to all of the plugged in devices. For me, it enables me to put my MacBook away and still have access to three full-size monitors, two external storage devices, and the dongle for my wireless keyboard, leaving me with enough ports on the MacBook Pro for other accessories like a stream deck or microphones. And a docking station like this can significantly cut down the cable clutter on your desk and around your laptop, giving you a more clean, spacious, and clutter-free desk. So if you're looking for hubs or docking stations, the Anchor 563 USB-C docking station 10 in one has great performance that will meet your needs. Anyway, back to the video. While the MagSafe port is the best way to charge the laptop, I end up not charging it using the MagSafe port as often as I use the USB-C port. That's because since so many things are USB-C, I just find it more convenient to take a USB-C cable with me when I need to travel so I can use it to charge other devices like an iPad, my camera, a different laptop, or a Nintendo Switch, since most things now use USB Type-C. Also, since the MacBook Pro has USB-C ports on both sides, I can choose which side I want to plug into without putting too much stress on the cable or ports, or do that awkward shuffle where, oh, I only have a charging port on the left-hand side, but the outlet is all the way over on the right. So in this case, yes, it's less safe, but much more convenient for me. I think the body of the laptop has held up pretty well. I have only minor scuffs on the lid, the little rubber feet, and a little around my most frequently used ports. The keyboard does build up fingerprint oils and then they kind of start to look a little shiny, but this is nothing out of the ordinary and all MacBooks deal with this and they will get worse over time. Like I mentioned in most of my long-term MacBook reviews, the physical features I'm most worried about are the edges around the MacBook and the ports. If you wear jewelry or watches on your wrists, you can damage the edges of the laptop since that's where your wrist normally rests. That's because when your wrist is moving up and down, the accessory on your wrist can end up scratching that area of the laptop. At most, I wear an Apple Watch, and since I have long fingers, my wrist is usually not close to the edge, but definitely something to think about if you have either smaller hands or wear a lot of accessories on your wrists. On my other USB-C MacBooks, I found that after using them for an extended amount of time, the USB-C ports become less responsive. Maybe because the older MacBooks only had two USB-C ports for charging, dongles and peripherals, so they were always in use. But on this one, I haven't had any of them act funky or not work after the first plug-in. Overall, they've been very consistent. This laptop is not a big chonky boy, but it's probably heavier than you're expecting in your hand. This thing has a decent heft to it. 
Again, this isn't a super heavy laptop, but much more noticeable than some of the other MacBooks like the M2 MacBook Air. And you will feel this thing in your backpack and you will feel it when it's not in there either. While slightly heavier, this MacBook Pro does make up for it with all of these different ports. And it's really made it easy to never bring any dongles with me. Of course, I think it's still a good idea to bring a tiny USB-A to USB-C adapter, but beyond that, I find myself rarely ever needing to bring anything else. The notch, while you know it's there, fades into the background, and really, I stopped noticing it after a week of owning this thing. The mini LED ProMotion display is probably the nicest looking display I have in the entire house. The combination of how bright it gets, the resolution and refresh rate make it enjoyable from watching movies, to making videos, to just everyday usage. Paying your bills and Google Sheets never looked so good in my life. It makes everything look great and feel like butter all at the same time. And in real world usage, I never see mini LED blooming since I rarely have the display all the way up to notice. In terms of thermals, the laptop doesn't really get warm during general usage and is normally just room temperature, even when I'm using it on my lap. If I'm using it and the laptop is just sitting on the couch, which by the way, you should never do, I promise it's not often, but during that, it obviously gets warm, but never enough to get the fans revving up. Just don't do it for long as you're basically suffocating the poor thing. Now, during video editing in Final Cut Pro, it does get warm, but even then, I don't really hear much fan noise coming out of this MacBook. Overall, outside of the fanless MacBooks, this has been one of the quietest MacBooks I've owned. Since ownership, I don't think I've experienced many instances where I throw something at the MacBook Pro and I can't handle it. I spend a lot of time between this MacBook Pro and the Mac Studio. It's probably close to 50-50, but even then, 95% of the things that I do on the Mac Studio could probably just be done on the MacBook Pro. This laptop has really been my workhorse and I never felt like I needed more power than what I already have here. For video editing, I'm often editing two to four streams of mixed footage between 4K.264 and ProRes with light color grading in Final Cut Pro. I don't use any proxies either and it cuts through the raw footage like butter. This has been my favorite on the go editing machine. Battery life is good even after a year, but I find that while asleep, the MacBook Pro doesn't seem to last anywhere near as long as my old M1 Air did and needs to be charged more often if left to sleep for days. But that just may be how I personally use the laptop. Because this MacBook Pro is such a good performer, I can see people using this as their only machine, like using a laptop when they're on the go or when they're sitting on their couch, and then as a desktop replacement when they're sitting at their desk, because it just has so many ports that you can plug into and use and has more than enough power for most desktop tasks. It's just a shame that with the transition to Apple Silicon, these Macs no longer can run Windows natively. It's only if you have an older Intel Mac, and that's definitely affected how I use Macs. Before, on my Intel Mac, I would use Boot Camp to just store a small Windows partition with all the casual Windows-only games I'd like to play and all the different softwares I wanna use. How am I gonna fuel that Genshin addiction otherwise, right? But with the M1 Pro, you have to run things through virtualization if you wanna run Windows. And the M1 Pro is decent at running Windows in a virtual machine, but it's obviously not perfect, and certain software like Genshin just doesn't run well in a VM. So if I need to use Windows, I have a dedicated machine for Windows and PC gaming. So as a surprise to no one, this MacBook Pro does not provide a good gaming or Windows experience outside of virtual machines. So I guess at this point, it's conclusion time. The price of the 14 inch MacBook Pro when it was released and when I bought it was $2,000. At the time, that was a very steep price to pay for this single laptop. I mean, that's the cost of two M1 MacBook Airs at that time. But when the laptop is able to do quite literally anything and everything the average person wants to do and has all the functionality professionals would want in a single package and is able to replace many of the desktop workstations in the process, then I feel like this laptop is definitely worth it especially now when it's on sale at $1,600 pretty often. That being said, this is 100% a machine made for power users and professionals. And if you don't need that crazy power, ports, or a 120 hertz mini LED display, then an M1 or M2 MacBook Air might be the better choice for your wallet and use case. But for those who need the power, the versatility, and reliability of having everything in a complete package, then this is it. So to answer the earlier question, Yes, I would have gotten the same laptop again. I don't think there is such a thing as a perfect laptop, but when it comes to things that I personally do, this laptop is nearly perfect in every way 
for those tasks. Anyway, what do you personally think? Do you own a 14 inch MacBook Pro? How's your experience with it going? Are you currently considering one? What made you consider one? What other laptops are you looking at? Leave all that in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. And well, don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you all next time. Bye.